Hey everybody, Jeremy Wood, Diane Robertson, Cocoa Beach, Florida. We're going deep sea fishing today and we're looking for sharks. Isn't that right, Captain Greg? That's right. We're going to go after uh, the big great white, but most likely we're going to catch his smaller cousins. I'm going to go <laughs> swimming and see if I can find them. We may chum the waters with nice. Diane or potentially no, what we chum. ate for breakfast this morning. Yes. So we're going fishing right here on Just Down the Road. Deep sea fishing, what can I say, it's something I have always wanted to do. So when we got together and decided that was something we would like to try out on our trip to Florida, I could not wait. I knew it was going to be a highlight. I have deep sea fished before and it was very unpleasant, I can tell you. However, being the trooper that I am and the fearless gal, okay, I said, we'll go deep sea fishing. So I took about 70 Dramamine and I got to tell you, it was sweet. I had a good time. We actually caught something, a lot of somethings. You'll see, it's very exciting. And I did not hurl. Hmm. Any good fisherman knows you gotta get up early, early, early in the morning to catch the fish. So early. We were up and out by uh, Captain Greg at Port Canaveral at about seven o'clock in the morning. It was like 4 a.m. Seven o'clock in four. the morning. Four. Early, so. people, it was early. The sun was up. Well, it's not my fault. No, it is your fault for never getting out of bed past 11 o'clock in the morning. Well, this takes work. The channel was calm and smooth, it looked beautiful, the sun was rising, very, very spectacular to see. And we were about to get on the boat and head out and he said, oh by the way, the ocean is really chopping this morning. And I heard the word chop and that's all it took. I took about 100 more Dramamine. I was all set. Between you, me and the camera, uh, once we did hit the open waters, Captain Greg was correct. They were very, very choppy, and I was very, very nervous. Though I did my best to remain calm and uh, like a rock for the rest of the crew. But there were times where the water was over your head and under your feet. Over here you could touch it. Over there you looked like you'd pitch right into it. So I began to make preparations for how I would survive should the boat capsize. The only thing I could think of is that Diane is full of hot air and perhaps I could use her as a life preserver. 20 or 30 minutes into the ride, we head to this area, which is a big shoal, and it's called the Bite. And clearly it's called that because that's where all the fish bite, specifically sharks. So we anchor, throw out some chum, and begin to prepare to catch a shark. Water's a little bit choppy, but we are looking for sharks. So far, no one's fallen over. But the day is early, and Diane hasn't annoyed me enough for the obligatory shove, which will come at some point. It's getting very exciting now because we're starting to chump the waters. That's my own term for it, thank you very much. And I'm not talking minnows, people. He gets this fish, this mackerel out from the bottom of the boat, and these big chunks, if you will, like a salad plate, and this machete, and chunks it off and hooks it on the deal and throws it out there. I mean, it's just chumping everywhere. And then all of a sudden behind us, we hear Jesse. God love her, chumping herself. I'm taking in the scenery in this beautiful morning in spite of the choppy waters. We've got Kennedy Space Center right off the coast. It's just beautiful, beautiful. He continues to chum the waters and it's about this time when our first camera person goes down. At first, I thought Jessie was just helping Captain Greg chum the waters. As it turns out, she was trying to feed the fish with what she ate for breakfast that morning. Clearly, we were very excited. We had jump in the water, we were ready to go, and all of a sudden we heard the magic sound. Zzz, yep, there it was. A shark was on the line, and we were all about it. Captain Greg jumped into action, Jeremy and I jumped into action, whatever that meant for me. We had a shark. doing 
this because I need a break. I just want to let Diane have an experience with it too. Many of you watching the show have probably fished before. You've caught some bass, perch, maybe a crappie or two. Maybe you've done deep sea fishing and you know exactly what I'm getting ready to say. Catching a bass, even a four or five pound bass, you know, it's up a good fight. You feel it kind of jerking the rod and the line is going straight and it's just a, a little bit of a fight. Maybe at the end of it you're winded, but there was never any chance that you were not going to bring this fish in. Catching a shark that weighs 100, 200 pounds is a little bit different. It's like putting your line on the end of a truck and trying to reel it in. There is no fight. It's all about, can I just stay on board? And you know, I've got some guns here, right? But uh, my arms were on fire. It's done. Okay, well, I couldn't finish it. Who are we kidding? I told people I did, but I did. Hey, you're in. As strong as the shark was, I'm estimating the beast's strength to be between 13 and 43 men. I was able to eventually wear it down. Inch by inch, I reel her in, bring her up to the side of the boat. Captain Greg leans over, grabs a hold of her, pulls her up with Diane pretending to help, and we get her on board. And the first shark of the day is landed by yours truly. So in the boat she came and, uh, you know, I was just stroking her belly. It was darling. And all that aside, we had a shark in the boat. I could not believe it. Captain Greg says it's a black tip shark, probably six to seven feet long, 100, 150 pounds, which is different than my assessment in that it was a great white shark, 20 to 21 feet, and somewhere in the neighborhood of three tons, which would have made it a record, but I'm not here to fight. Well, now it's picture time, of course, because what are you going to do when you get a 100-pound shark in your boat? You're going to take pictures, and you're going to take them fast because, you know, usually the sharks are a little on the irate side. So the tail's kind of slapping around a little bit, and we jump in and start smiling, and Jeremy picks her up. God love him. I mean, he just picks her all the way up. I couldn't believe she didn't bite his head or anything. It would have been hilarious if she did it, but <clears throat> she didn't. But we got some great snaps, I got to say. All right. Hey, man. Good job. checking on Jessie and making sure that she was okay, uh, which she wasn't, uh, I decided we must press on uh, in spite of the fact that she couldn't uh, stand up straight or even think or talk without puking. Uh, and it wasn't long after checking on there that the second shark hits the line. It's a spinner shark, people, and it is jumping up and out of the water, spinning like a mad woman, trying to get off the line, of course. It was very exciting to watch. Captain Greg, this is the only mistake he made the whole day, in his haste to get the shark in, picks the rod up and hands it to Diane. Approximately 30 seconds later, the shark is gone. Uh, as a spinner shark, he gave all kinds of excuses about how the line broke, but let's face it, Diane let the thing go away. Had he handed it to me, I'd have set the hook and brought that thing in, because believe me, once I hook you, whether you're a shark or a lady, you're coming to me. Unbeknownst to us, cameraman number two, down, ding, poor Jordan. He was in the frozen trying not to hurl position and he stayed that way pretty much the whole rest of the trip. Jordan, the muskrat Martin, he gets struck with the seasickness. God bless his soul. Jessie's over in the corner puking her shoes up in the chum bucket and Jordan just becomes a statue, focusing on the shore with laser-like intent. So we have two camera people down, just so you know, just down the road has two camera people. So like the rock that he is, Reuben Samuels, our producer, grabs the camera and begins to film. And it's a good thing he does because shark number three has just been landed. And here it comes, it started all over again. It was a darn 
shame. Our comrades were down. I mean, you know, they're not feeling well or anything, but golly, we have a shark in the water, right? Priorities. So in we went and we were checking. Of course, Jeremy and I are pros at this time. I had all my gloves. We're jumping back and forth. I got this. Yep, yep, yep. And I had that thing up to the boat in no time. I thought from that, it must mean this is a smaller shark. Uh, the shark gets almost right up to the side of the boat. Captain Greg's going to lean in and get it, and it's like she caught a glimpse of us, and that was it. When she figured out what was going on, she took off, took all the line I had reeled in, and more. Uh, what was going to be a short 10-minute experience, take some pictures and throw her back in the water, became a 40-minute tug of war, which I, of course, won. Woo! Shark number three was a little bit more feisty than the rest of them. When she got on board, she was flipping that tail around, slamming her head into people. So uh, we thought it would be best if we just got a quick picture with her and then let her go on her way. So Diane hopped over again, pretending like she did something with the shark other than just watch it. Uh, snaps the photo with me. We turn it over to Captain Greg and he lets her back in the water. And as he's doing so, the shark slapped him one more time just for good measure. So. Three sharks on the day. Not bad so far. Good job. All right, let's let her go. As I mentioned, the camera people are near death. Jessie is in the hull of the boat with the chum bucket, face in. By this time, she's done puking up her shoes. She's on her socks. Jordan has not moved, let alone said a word in the last 30 to 40 minutes but he is some shade of green that, to this day, I'm not real sure if science has ever detected that on the color spectrum. I look over at Diane, I say, look, we've hooked three sharks today, we've landed two. Maybe for the safety of the crew, against my better wishes, we should head on in. We hit dry land and I can hear behind me, yay! Although it sounded a little more like, <laughs> Anyway, Captain Greg says he's got a huge mackerel left over. Would we like him to fillet it for us? Yes, we were in, absolutely. When you're in Florida, a lot of the restaurants there will take your catch, uh, help you fillet it if you don't know how, and then they'll cook it for you just the way you want it. So Captain Greg already filleted the fish, took it in, and they cooked it. He told them exactly how. We all sit down, order our sides and some appetizers, and begin eating. And here come these two huge plates of fish, one covered in this teriyaki glaze, this other one in this this unbelievable spicy glaze. The restaurant was fantastic and they had all kinds of sides to eat with it and the corn and the coleslaw, everything you can imagine that goes with fish. We ate like kings and queens. It's delicious, delicious. And we just stuffed our faces, kicked back and relaxed and celebrated the day that was. It just could not have ended in a better way. We were so full from our food that we just decided to hang out for the whole afternoon. We told shark stories and kind of exchanged, you know, joshes with each other of we did this and we did that. And it's just fun to watch the people and the boat and the pelicans and there's lots to do there. It was very, very nice. fishing under our belts, we decided to take on manatees. So we went to the Crystal River Water Sports Company. We were gonna be one with the manatee. If you're gonna go swimming with the manatees, you have to put on a wetsuit, flippers, goggles, and a snorkel. In other words, all the things that are gonna make you look really, really hot. Jeremy, what about those wetsuits? What about them? Oh my gosh, getting in them and out of them. Although out of them was easier, we were stone cold, and so they kind of fell off at that point. 
I didn't have any trouble at all. In fact, when I walked in, Julie looked at me and went, man size, huh? And I was like, that's right, babe. Really? I thought she said manatee size. Man that's size. I, that's what I man heard. Man size. Well. I wear clothes like that all the time. You, on the other hand, watching you put it on was like watching someone try to shove toothpaste back in the tube. <laughs> oh my gosh! Pretty funny, just... <laughs> oh my gosh. No emails from our female viewers, okay? No emails. I don't need anything talking about how good I look. I'm a married man. See that? See that? Married. Just keep your comments to yourself. We are going to get in the water someday. Diane taking her sweet, ever-loving time. We were introduced to Captain Sam, put on his boat, and headed out to Three Sister Springs to look for the manatees and swim with them. I couldn't wait. Jeremy, we're on a skip. Kings Bay, we're gonna go look at some manatees we got on our flippers. We're all set. That's all right, Diane. It's gonna be a lot of fun. Take after. that out. All right. All right, and don't slobber all over me. Ugh, okay. We're going to see some manatees over at Three Sister Springs, and uh, we're hoping to get up close. So far, we've been rejected on a lot of our Florida trip as far as seeing a manatee other rejected. than a bubble here or there. Yeah, so teeth. we are going to their home where they live, where they reside. We're gonna film them underwater. With flippers. We're coming, manatees. It's the crew of Just Down the Road. Scouts. Dork, such a dork. <sighs> we get in the water there by the river, and to be honest with you, when we first got in and I'm looking through the goggles, everything's very murky and very hard to see, and I'm thinking, man, we're not gonna see a manatee unless they're right in front of our face. Well, Captain Sam leads Diane and me up to this little channel, and as you kind of make a left and go around the corner there, the water just unbelievably clears up, goes from this murky brown to this crystal clear kind of blue hued water where you can see everything for 30, 40 feet out. There's fish everywhere, tree roots, beautiful, beautiful rocks. It was just incredible. That alone would have been worth the trip. But 10, 15 feet into this channel, here comes a mama and her two babies. It was extraordinary. As we swam out of the murky waters into this beautiful, crystal clear, blue spring area, sure enough, here came a mama and her babies and they swam right by us. continue up this narrow little channel and as we get to the end of it, it opens up into this giant well of springs. And again, the crystal clear water, the vegetation, all the fish, and lo and behold, there's probably 20 manatees laying back there amongst all kinds of people taking pictures, riding around in boats, swimming around and interacting with these manatees. It was, uh, if I hadn't seen it, I wouldn't have believed something like this exists. It was peaceful and lovely. Very nice woman with manatees. We'd been back in the spring now for about 15, 20 minutes, and uh, I was starting to think, well, we're not gonna get to pet one of these things. And I was kind of starting to feel bummed out when this mom and her little baby calf swam right by us. And as they're going away and I'm filming with the camera, uh, the little baby calf turns his head and just comes right back at us, swims right up to me and goes through my legs and starts swimming around me and letting him, let me petting him. He, he, was, he was very similar to like a little puppy. Uh, just very, very playful. Uh, and then I heard this kind of high-pitched squeal. Now, because I'm around Diane so much, I could understand clearly what the mama manatee was saying, which was, Junior, it's time for dinner. Get over here and leave that good-looking human alone. So he swam off, but I thank Junior for the experience. It was a once-in-a-lifetime moment. He probably thought Jeremy was his dad. <laughs> Anyway, it was really fun to watch, and I was smiling so big at the whole thing. I got water and I was choking. It was totally worth it, though. It was time.
time for both the manatees and us to get a little rest. So we swam back to the boat, climbed on in and shivered ourselves as we drank hot tea and hot chocolate and kind of reflected over the whole experience. And I just could not stop looking at the water. I didn't want to get out. It was very peaceful. It was very comfortable. And the manatees are the sweetest creatures. They're very gentle. You got to try swimming with the manatees. I had a great time. I had a great time deep sea fishing, too. swimming with the manatees. Captain Greg, Captain Sam were both great. Good guys with good senses of humor. They both knew how to tell a good story. Um, just lifetime memories you'll never ever forget and I can't wait to go do it again. You gotta check it out people. Go down and do the manatees, swim, 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 and do some deep sea fishing. Who knows, you might have a big fat shark too. And maybe you could be one with this one. Jeremy, hey, we're manatees. Hey. That's right, everybody, the manatees on just down the road. We've just had a wonderful time today, and we hope you have too. Thanks to Greg and Amber Rapp with Sea Leveler. We just had a great time catching sharks and hanging out on the open seas. Thanks to Ken, Julie, and Captain Sam with Crystal River Water Sports. If you'd like more information about them, just go to our website, justdowntheroad.net. And while you're there, you can find us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and all the social media, and even send us show ideas. For Diane Robertson, I'm Jeremy Wood. This has been Just Down the Road. Bye. Ow. <laughs> Ow. My head's stuck. First, I want to apologize to the viewers uh, for not filming Jesse chumming the waters <laughs> and Jordan in his frozen move. At the time, first of all, they were our camera people, so yeah, kind of hard for hard. them to film themselves. Yeah. But I suppose we could have picked up a camera and filmed them. At, at the time, it felt wrong. It did. It very felt like wrong. it would be wrong. Wrong. In hindsight, oh, we missed it. Would have been great television. Yeah, great.